Hey. Morning, everyone. Morning. Well, 11. Still morning. Still morning. All right, so this is how to build a blog engine in 15 minutes with Ruby on Rails. Uh, you know, we, all, we all love that talk back from 2005. Can you Oh. Oh. Uh, let's, let's get the volume Let's up. get the volume up there. <laughs> Can we hear it? Can Whoops. We hear it? Whoops. Ah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I have to play it into the mic. What's the plan to the mic? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Anyways. We might have spent a little too much time on the soundboard. All right. Uh, so this is my scene called Kenichi Nakamura, also known as Kenichi PDX on Twitter, uh, just Kenichi on GitHub. Uh, this is a photo we took last Saturday at Davey's barbecue pool party where I brought some freedom sauce and Ken was sniffing all the freedom sauce to figure out what we actually put on the ribs. Um, take A man who takes his barbecue seriously. Uh, he works at Esri PDX in town. Um, this is a Friday hug picture we took last Friday. Um, picture of the mascot Geo uh, Loki from the startup Geo Loki that was acquired by Esri. Um, some My Little Ponies as well in there. <laughs> Uh, so Ken told us when I came into town that he couldn't hang out on Wednesday nights because he had to go to a rock band practice. So I was hanging out with Jonah, and this is what we pictured him playing the video game Rock Band uh, with stuffed animals in the backyard. Um, so pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Uh, but he also plays in a Davy Bowie band as well. Um, if any of you are here in town for Design Week in October uh, and you like David Bowie, uh, visit this link and come check out a awesome show. Uh, like I was saying before, he's from Portland, and I learned Portland has the slogan, keep Portland weird. I've definitely found some weird things while I've been around Portland, uh, probably because of all the reality TV that is happening. Uh, so I've been trying to find fun things to do that don't revolve completely around drinking, uh, though drinking might be somewhat related. Uh, so I've been doing Ruby karaoke this year. Uh, this is a picture in Taiwan that I took of Charlie Nutter and Arnie Brister uh, singing A Whole New World with each other. Um, this is pretty awesome. Uh, fun fact, I learned that Charlie Nutter has been to a Backstreet Boys concert in the last six years. <laughs> So there's that. Uh, very good Backstreet Boys karaoke singer, by the way. So if you want uh, someone in your boy pop band, I would totally call on him. Um, this is a picture of Zachary Scott and Donish Khan when I was in SF doing Ruby karaoke. I think they're also singing A Whole New World. Uh, it's like a thematic duet thing that we do. And uh, staying in theme, me and Terrence met in uh, Washington, DC at Ruby Nation and, of course, sang A Whole New World. Uh, together. Um, this is us uh, having a great time. Uh, I mean, you totally would want to be here for this. Y you want to hear it. So, speaking of. Uh, so we're going to do a 70 themes Ruby karaoke night for Cascade Ruby at SC Voice Box night uh, around 8 p.m. Uh, I guess that's when the new Relic Party started, so 8 p.m. sound like a good time. Uh, in light of the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, which I forced Davey and Ken to watch with me so we could get in theme for this karaoke night. All right, so this is my esteemed colleague, Terrence Lee. He, uh, among Gangnam Style and other things, he is known as Hone02 on Twitter. And uh, he works for Heroku, the Heroku of Herokus. Yes. Um, very nice paths that we all know and love. Um, he wears this blue hat all the time, which I learned comes from John Hopkins University. Um, and when, let's see, I met you in DC, we were talking on the internet, and he was like, I want to make stickers of the blue hat. So I tapped my coworker, Nick Wise, who's a lovely designer, and within a day, we had these shipped off to Sticker Mule, and now he has stacks of blue hat stickers. I do. So if you like Terrence, you like blue hats, and you like stickers, find him and grab some stickers. Yes, I, have, I brought 150 stickers to Portland just for this conference. So I think there's enough. All right, so he's from Austin. And Austin, among other things, like live music, is known for delicious Mexican food. Um, and here are some, oh, god, I'm hungry. That looks really good. Yep. Um, 
The breakfast tacos, though, eh, I wasn't so impressed. Uh, Austin also likes to keep it weird, and in that vein, Terrence is throwing a Keep Ruby Weird conference this October. Uh, I'll be there. If any of you are going, I will see you there. And uh, we can all say hi to this little frog thing. All right, so here's our agenda, lovely scribbled out, and me, you, Freak, Friday hug. Friday hug. So right. uh, this is a tradition that I got from Aaron, I believe, or first saw it from Aaron, where he would tweet pictures of himself hugging the camera every Friday. Uh, he did tell us it was Friday yesterday, I think. But uh, so I would like to invite Davey up on the stage to help us with Friday hug photos. So basically, you take a picture of yourself hugging the camera. And traditionally, when I've gone around speaking at conferences, I've gotten fun pictures of everyone doing this. Um, so everyone, so stand, stand up. up. Put your arms out. Yeah. We're going to preemptive Friday hug this. Preemptive Friday hug. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys, girls. What? All right. It worked. Back to the agenda. Oop. Oh. All right, so we got the Friday hug. All right, so we're going to talk about web sockets, a little bit about the reactor pattern, server send events. Maybe we'll get to a bonus round, and uh, of course, we'll all profit at the end. Okay. Uh, so web sockets. Uh, I mean, this is what I imagine in my head when I think of web sockets. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar, WebSockets is a two-way communication channel between a client and server over TCP communication. And the big benefit of using something like WebSockets is that it adheres to the TCP protocol. So if you're working in a corporate environment and you're stuck behind a firewall, uh, may, oftentimes you only have very limited select number of ports open, like port 80 or port 443. Uh, you can use WebSockets uh, because it just piggybacks on top of uh, TCP. Um, so if we look at a sample WebSocket handshake request, uh, it looks like a standard HTTP request with uh, a connection upgrade headers in. Uh, so you tell the server, hey, I'm upgrading to WebSockets, uh, and then pass some security so you don't get some cross-site stuff as well. Um, and then on the response side, you get a standard TCP response back, and the server acknowledges, yes, I'm going to do use WebSockets. I acknowledge that you, we've upgraded the connection. And then you're kind of good to go. So pretty easy to use over standard TCP stuff, supported by most modern browsers, uh, actually all the modern browsers, I believe. And you don't necessarily need to have kind of new infrastructure in place or really talk to your admins to kind of make that happen. So it's a good technology for um, getting that out for a two-way communication channel. All right, so the reactor is uh, something that's been around for a little while and implemented in lots of different languages, uh, Twisted in Python, Node in JavaScript, and uh, it's a design pattern for handling concurrent requests, and these requests can come from lots of things, either user input or I.O., in this case, of course, I.O. Um, often used in GUIs, like I said, for user input, like on click, whatever, like in the DOM. Swing in Java. Swing, yeah, uh, lots of listeners. things. Listeners, add event listener in JavaScript. So um, a, a common reactor in Ruby is the event machine one, and it runs in, inside an event loop that you have to put everything inside. Um, so it can be, oh, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, so inside of the event loop, uh, oftentimes you'll register all your handles, handlers in there, and so you would have one for your various events. Uh, this is an example using the Fabe WebSocket client, uh, and then in here we're registering events for when the WebSocket opens, you want to do some stuff, and in this case you're just sending a hello world message back over the pipe. Um, and when you receive a message, we're just printing that message out to the screen, and then when we close that WebSocket connection, we're just clearing out that variable and then printing to the screen that it's been closed and why it was closed. Um, so you want to register all your events inside the reactor. Uh, and the, the big benefit of doing something like this uh, with, uh, besides getting the concurrency is that it allows you to separate the event logic that you're doing with all the kind of handoff code that hands the events off and figures out where to run it. Um, all the demultiplexing happens for you in the reactor by the framework itself. 
so you can keep the actual event logic clean, separated from kind of any of the threading code or other things that you have to do to kind of make this happen. However, it can be difficult to debug because things can be hard to reproduce in this scenario. Obviously, if events are happening at different times asynchronously, it can be really hard to like get a solid um, reproduction case down and everything's not deterministic. Uh, you can get into crazy callback chains oftentimes and Node is famous yep. for this callbacks Very that call callbacks. So uh, speaking of Node. Um, I mean, has anyone, <laughs> does anyone love doing JavaScript in the DOM? No. Yeah. Favorite part. No hands went up. Well, I think I think saw two. Two? Two. Three? All right, get out of here. No, we're just kidding. Uh, That's all right. actually pretty awesome. So I have just, audio. Yeah. Just like uh, JavaScript has no feet, neither does this cat. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we found this on uh, uh, Gorby, Gorby Puff that Aaron was talking about yesterday. Aaron's cat. Uh, he has a Twitter account that mostly posts pictures of the cat. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so we're going to talk about this simple chat app we built uh, just using very basic web sockets. Um, so first off, in the back end, uh, we set this up using a rack middleware. So in the constructor, you pass the app in. Um, and then uh, we're using Redis here to deal with passing messages across multiple processes. Uh, and kind of the, the key point in this constructor is that when Redis receives a message, uh, we're going to go through all the clients that are registered and send that message down through the WebSocket. Um, so this is how all the uh, clients are going to receive the chat messages. And then we have the call function, which uh, Aaron also alluded to, uh, loving that large environment variable global thing. So uh, this is that method there. And they provides a convenience method for determining, reading all the headers out of that environment to determine if it's a WebSocket or not. And if it is, we can run some code. And if it isn't, you can kind of just return back to the normal call stack. Um, when we instantiate a new WebSocket, uh, the interesting thing to note is that you can pass a bunch of options. But one of the important ones is this ping option. So oftentimes, most routers will close connections if it detects something's been idle for too long. Uh, so you can set a ping time, basically, where if nothing has happened, it will send a ping message to the clients. Uh, so I think we set this constant to about 30 seconds. And then the client will respond with a pong uh, to keep that connection open and keep data flowing. Um, and then we want to go through and just basically register a bunch of event handlers. So when we get a new WebSocket connection, we need to make sure to stash that somewhere so we can access it later. So we keep an array of clients around that Redis will have access to to send all the messages to. When we actually get a message, we want to publish this message to Redis. So when that happens, it then calls the Redis thing in the initializer uh, that sends the messages out. And then when we get a connection closed, we want to make sure to remove that client from the array so we're not sending messages to clients that don't exist. Oops. Man, that's really quiet. Yeah, let me turn that up. Can we get that turned up? Uh, but, but we fortunately need Whoops. some JavaScript. Yes. Uh, but we still need some JavaScript for the front end. Um, so uh, we have, in the example app, just a simple text field with a button. Uh, and inside the JavaScript, we instantiate a new WebSocket. Uh, WS is the WebSocket protocol. You can use WSS for secure WebSocket protocol. Um, and then you basically establish a connection to the server that you have set up. And then you can set up some event handlers. In this case, it's just it sets up an alert. So every time you receive a message, you'll do a pop-up, which is probably not what you actually want to do. Um, but you know. Uh, and then when we actually get a message to send, we can pull that from the click button and pull that from the text field and then send that down the pipe down to the server. So uh, then Redis will get it and we'll register it with the server and then send it out to all the other clients. So we have a demo here uh, that Ken's going to drive. Okay. All right. So you can all visit fay-ws-chat.herograph.com. And if everything is working, 
Whoops. Ooh. It worked. Yes. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> All right. Look at that. Tater bases. Tater bases. I'm waiting for the inevitable. <laughs> oh, DHH. I'm waiting for the inevitable script tag with a Rickroll URL in there. It's not going to happen. Not happening. Whoops. All right. <laughs> Let you all play with that while we get back to the jam. So shameless Heroku plug. Uh, we announced this Heroku button last week, which uh, I think is super awesome. Uh, I was actually just talking to Mike about it yesterday. And uh, if you click this, it's in the readme, so if you go to the GitHub repo when we post the slides later, uh, if you click this button, you'll get to direct it to this page if you have a Heroku account already. If you don't, you'll get asked to sign up. Um, and then it sets up everything that you need to get the app running. And so you can either put an app name or not. Uh, if you don't, we'll come up with an awesome name for you. And then you hit deploy, and the app will get deployed on Heroku, and you'll have that awesome running, really basic web chat app working. All right, so that was a lot of work we had to do to get all those handlers registered, deal with the on close, set up the ping, just yada yada, just, just for WebSockets. Um, and still, even then, if you close your browser tab, it won't send a close event over the WebSocket. It'll just close the socket. And then next time you try to write to it, you'll get a syscall error, all this stuff. So I thought it would be really great if that would be a lot easier. I love Sinatra. And uh, I thought, wow, if there was like a WebSocket route builder that I could just do stuff in, just like Sinatra, that would be so easy. So um, I looked up Frank Sinatra. and. It turns out he was in a movie called From Here to Eternity, where he played a character named Angelo Maggio. And I guess he won uh, Best Supporting Actor for this. I've never seen it. I think it's a Pearl Harbor movie or something. Um, but anyway, I thought a great name association. I'll call this thing Angelo. So here it is. It's a DSL like Sinatra, written on top of the real web server, uh, which is on top of Cellular.io, which is a, a reactor um, with non-blocking IO, uh, written on top of Celluloid. Um, and just like, so we've all seen Sinatra, right? It's really easy. Four lines of code, and you have a running web server. Um, you can go to high and get Hello World back in your browser. It's awesome, right? So easy. I thought, let's do that. So here's an example of Angelo. Um, require the gem, have your class, run your WebSocket builder at the path slash. It passes in the, the WebSocket. And we want to stash those for later because maybe other requests might do things or other events might happen. So nice, easy WebSocket stash to put that in. Um, and then we, uh, we handle the on message, and that's it. When we get a message over the WebSocket, we pipe it back out to every other connected WebSocket. Done. That's it. That's how much work you have to do to get to Hello World. That's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. All right. So. The other thing that uh, Celluloid.io gives you is um, the ability to run asynchronous tasks. And uh, I thought that would be a great thing to have in there, because a lot of times we'll want to run these. So I have a task builder. Um, in this case, you, you specify uh, a name for the task. And what we're going to do here is just every second, we're going to connect to or write out the heart to every connected WebSocket in the hearts context. Um, then when a WebSocket request comes in for the hearts route, we're going to run this task asynchronously and then add this WebSocket to that hearts context. So then, as you're going along, and every second, this WebSocket is just going to get that heart character. Ruby Love, Ruby Love Task Force, right there. So we decided to take the chat app that we had with Faye and all that other stuff and rewrite it in Angela. Yeah, we need two cats for this picture because it's version two. So just like the example, that route builder is going to look pretty familiar. We're going to stash the WebSocket. We're going to run the task. Obviously, we only want to run it once because it's going to subscribe to Redis and then pipe it out to over, over everything else. Um, and then again, we need to handle the on message. But really, this is it. Look at all the code I'm not writing. Look at all the things I'm not doing. <laughs> so, And uh, here's our subscribe task. <laughs> Um, we're going to set a flag that we've subscribed. And really, there's a lot of stuff here, just connecting to Redis, subscribing to the channel, yada, yada. And mainly, the main meet is we're going to uh, take every message that comes down the Redis channel and pipe it out to all the WebSockets. So interestingly enough, we did not have to change any of the front end from before. The, the JavaScript with the input tag, all that stays the same. The simple uh, few lines of uh, Ruby here does all the work for us. 
and just use this ruby everywhere. <laughs> and look at all the stuff I'm not doing. Um, so we have a live running demo of this uh, on Heroku. You can all visit angelo-test.heroku app. And uh, again, hopefully you won't get Rick rolled up on stage here. But there it is. Oh, still tater bases. No, it's Whoops. working. It worked. <laughs> Bar. Great. Oh my God. All right. I'll let you all play with that for a little while and get back to the presentation here. All right. So now we're going to talk a little about server sent events, another way you can do communication with the clients. Uh, so when I was doing research for this talk, uh, you have to obviously read the Wikipedia page. And I found out that it was an experimental technology that was built into Opera in 2006. That makes it eight years old. That's pretty old. Uh, and um, speaking of browsers, uh, if you work for the enterprise and you have to support like a bunch of Internet Explorer in, like browsers, then you probably don't want to use server send events because you'll have a bad time because it just won't work. Um, and, but it does provide, if you're not doing that, it does provide this event source API that allows you to do a continuous data stream or me send messages from the server to the browser, so this one-way communication channel. Um, and you're probably wondering, why do I want a one-way communication channel if I can have two with WebSockets? Well, the nice thing is that it's proxyable, so if you sit behind, sitting behind a firewall or uh, like another front end server, I'll automatically proxy that connection for you. They are faster, and then I think the biggest thing that Ken pointed out to me was that they automatically try to reconnect. So if it ever gets disconnected at some point, uh, your connection drops, you're on loud the internet, you're using a MiFi or something, it'll automatically try to reconnect with the server without you having to do extra work um, in the code for that. So pretty awesome technology. So just like the WebSocket route builder, I thought, well, let's make a event source route builder. Um, so it looks very familiar. Um, and just like the WebSocket stash, we might want to stash these for later. So there's an SSE stash as well. Um, also, since event source is just a normal Git request with a different uh, content type, you can actually um, upgrade a Git route to an event source route by running a block inside that route handler. Uh, of course, it's a one-way communication from the server to the client. So to get something to happen, we're going to have to handle some kind of trigger, in this case a post route. And what we're going to do is just go through the stash and write out an SSE message to every single connected uh, event source client uh, with the message params. Uh, you'll see this little SSE message helper there. That's because uh, server sent events come in a specific format. It's very simple. Um, it looks like this. There's events and there's data. Uh, if it has no event name, it's just considered a message, so you do the on message handler. If it has an event in JavaScript, you add an event listener to it for the name. Um, these methods do pretty much exactly what they say they do. Um, take the event name and the data. The data is JSON. It'll, or the, sorry, if the data is hash, it'll convert it to JSON for you because JavaScript. All right, so we decided to rewrite that previous chat app with event source using post and event source um, instead of the WebSocket. Uh, we called it 2.1 because uh, it's not a huge upgrade, I guess. Uh, and we also thought uh, a cat pillow is like 0.1 of a cat. So. All right. So on the back end, we didn't have to change much at all. Um, we added the post route. Um, looks very familiar. Read us with publish out the sanitized message uh, for all you trying to rickroll the, the chat room there. Um, and the event source handler sashes it, subscribes runs a task. The task looks exactly the same, except for one change here. Instead of the WebSockets, we're going to iterate through the service and event connections. And on the front end, uh, remember, we had these uh, very simple things. All we're going to have to do is change these three lines. Uh, instead of WebSocket, we're just going to set up a new event source. Um, like I said, it reconnects for you. So if you're walking around town on your phone and you change IPs, whatever, it'll just automatically reconnect. Um, and, and then, of course, instead of um, sending the message over the WebSocket, we're going to jQuery post it up to the server. All right. There's also a live running demo of this on uh, my Linode. Uh, we, so you can all visit sse.nakamura.io. And there you go. Oh, 
first one. Oh, first one on this one. Anybody? No? Whoops! Oh. It worked! Look at that. All right. <laughs> I'm not clicking that to see <laughs> Mom? Oh, yeah, double question marks. I don't know why that comes up straight away. Anyway, cool. So, someone So, up. yeah, in conclusion, uh, if you want to use WebSockets, it's a good technology for doing du duplex communication, uh, two-way communication. Pretty easy to set up, uh, just piggybacks off of TCP. So that should be working for almost everyone. Um, Server sent events are faster. Uh, you get reconnects. Uh, you can proxy those connections. Uh, beware of using IE. It doesn't work with IE. So if you have that limitation, then you'll have to look elsewhere for stuff. But definitely a great technology there. Uh, you can use Angelo. It just uses Ruby everywhere. It just uses Ruby everywhere. Uh, and uh, you know you can use it today. So. Uh, it's out, uh, the, there's a gem there's out, a gem. it's on GitHub. It's a very early version, so, you know, file issues, let me know. Help, I, help me out. And, uh, whoops. <laughs> whoops. So if you're, if you're still, do, you probably still need to use JavaScript if you're, the browser is the client that you're going to use, which is probably true for most people. Uh, you can definitely build, like, Ruby clients if you want. You can use TCP, you can use TCP, obviously, sockets between Ruby, uh, so you can build a complete Ruby WebSocket app with client and browser, or with client and server, uh, if that's what you want to do. Um, but most of you will probably be using JavaScript there for the front end. Um, Look at all the things I'm not doing. <laughs> so real-time Ruby, right? WebSockets, servers, and events, we can make this happen. It's a thing. Please uh, check out the gem if you're interested, and uh, thank you very much. I just want to go through this list real quick. Uh, Tony, our Siri Bascule, at all at the Celluloid and Projects and all them for making all those lovely things. Uh, Hellurgium for his infinite patience at Ruby on Ails this year, helping me debug some testing. Uh, James Coglin for Fay WebSocket Project. Yes. Uh, Mike Perrin for Sidekick, because reading Sidekick code really helped me understand Celluloid a lot more. Uh, Kyle Drake and Yet for some uh, real-time inspiration. And uh, T. Patel, I don't actually know him. I think he works at Living Social, but he filed an issue asking for server sent events. That's actually only like two, three weeks old in the code base, so there's probably some bugs there. Maybe yeah, little ones. Trying out to fix out some and stuff a Davey there. Stevenson for helping us with the slides and finding great pictures and taking the Friday hug picture. Uh, also DHH for all right, this awesome soundboard. Uh, uh, I mean, as much fun as this has been, uh, that video ha was a big inspiration for me back in 2005 when it came out. Uh, it was pretty mind-blowing, I think, at the time of the yeah. amount of stuff that you could do and all the things you were weren't actually doing. Got me into Ruby. Yeah, so. Probably lots of you as well. All right, so. Oh, only sorry. Bonus round? We have a minute. We, we have one minute, out. okay. So. As a demo, last year, my company made a game called Map Attack. The back end was all written in Node, and it used WebSockets and other things to stream locations up to a server. Uh, the basic idea of the game is a real live action Pac-Man team-based type thing where there's coins out in the city, and you install this app, you, you join a team, and you run around, and as you get near them, they get claimed for your team if they are unclaimed. This is an actual board. We are right here in the middle. This is set up right now, and the game is running. If any of you would like to play during the break, uh, you can visit these URLs to install, I promise, non-malicious apps on your phones. And, um, and then at the, when our talk is done, they will put a viewer up on the screen that uses a WebSocket connected to Angelo server uh, that we can watch everyone running around and claiming coins on as the last live demo of everything. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And...